So how does Sony's flagship handle stiff competition like the iPhone 5? I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and this is a Sony Xperia Z versus the Apple iPhone 5. Aside from being very high-end devices, the Apple iPhone 5 and the Sony Xperia Z have very little in common. They differ in size, design, principle, and operating system. The way Apple designs its mobile products is in a way that the hardware simply melts away when you use the devices. And it's all about simplicity. When you pick up the device for the very first time, if you've never used one before, you already know how the device works. The way Sony designed the Xperia Z and customized the software really has nothing to do with simplicity, but more about the Sony experience. How your Xperia smartphone is interoperable with your other Sony products, your PlayStation or your PlayStation games, and your television. First, let's look at design, where these two devices actually have the most in common. Sure, the Xperia Z is much larger than the iPhone 5. The iPhone 5 has a 4-inch display versus the 5-inch display on the Xperia Z. But when you look past that, both devices have a very similar design. They're squared, they have hard edges, and relatively sharp corners. The Xperia Z's design, however, is a little more like the iPhone 4 and the 4S, in that it has a glass panel on the front and back of the device. On the front, it has dragon troll glass, and on the rear, it has a gorilla glass. The iPhone 4 and the iPhone 4S both had glass on the front and back as well. With the iPhone 5, Apple moved to an anodized aluminum plate for the back of the iPhone, leaving only two portions of glass on the rear, one at the bottom and one at the top for passing radio signals. So how do these two devices feel in the hand? The Xperia Z at 5 inches is a lot more unwieldy, and its hard edges make it a little hard to grip and use one-handed. If you hold the device in your right hand, the power button rests about at the base of your thumb, meaning you have to either stretch your thumb down or adjust your grip to reach it. And the volume rocker is also pretty difficult to reach as it rests just below where your palm sits if you hold the device with your right hand. If you switch over to your left hand, the volume rocker sits beneath your ring finger or middle finger and the power button is just above that. And although the Xperia Z feels very premium and substantial, it's not exactly comfortable to hold. And although the iPhone 5 has a similar design in that the edges are hard and sharp without a tapered back, it feels much more comfortable in the hand. It's narrower, smaller, and fits in the hand very easily. All the buttons are accessible using one hand and it's a much more manageable device. That said, the Xperia Z feels somewhat like a larger iPhone. So if Apple makes a larger iPhone in the future, let's hope they opt for a new design. Next, let's take a look at what these two devices have under the hood. The older of the two, the iPhone 5, has a 4-inch Retina display, which is IPS LCD, at a resolution of 1136 by 640. It also has an 8-megapixel camera, comes in either 1632 or 64 gigabytes of storage, 1 gigabyte of RAM, a 1.2 gigahertz dual-core A6 chip, and roughly 1440 milliamp hour battery. The Xperia Z, on the other hand, has a more standard resolution display. It's 5 inches diagonally with a pixel resolution of 1920 by 1080. It has a 1.5 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon S4 Pro chipset, 16 gigabytes of built-in storage with a micro SD card slot for expansion, 2 gigabytes of RAM, a 2330 mAh battery, and a 13.1 megapixel camera. So both of these devices, at least on paper, are extremely powerful. The trick up the Xperia Z's sleeve, however, is waterproofing. It comes with IP55 and IP57 dust and waterproofing, meaning that it's relatively safe from the elements. That also comes with its own caveat. All of the ports come covered. So to plug up your device, to take out your micro SD card, or to plug in headphones, you'll have to remove a cover first. But how do these specifications translate into performance? The iPhone 5 is notorious for being extremely consistent and performing really well. It's great at gaming and video playback and rarely ever stutters on the home screen, switching between applications, pulling down notification shades. It is really hard to bog this thing down. That's partially due to the fact that it doesn't do true multitasking and only ever focuses on one single task. Still, it rarely ever stutters. The quad-core processor on the Xperia Z is a different story. It should be enough to power the device without stuttering or any kind of hiccups, especially considered that it's paired with Project Butter. But it still stutters on the home screen, switching between applications, and all throughout normal use. It's very minor. Most people probably wouldn't notice it, but it's impossible to miss if you have a keen eye. Video playback and gaming is great, but these little hiccups and stutters really take from the full experience. The display is arguably the most important specification on a mobile device. It's your primary form of input and output on a device such as a smartphone. The iPhone 5 is regarded as having the most accurate display on the market. Again, the Xperia Z is the opposite of that. It super saturates colors and the contrast levels are extremely low. However, the clarity of the display at 1080p resolution makes video playback, pictures, gaming, and other visuals noticeably clearer. Pictures and videos all look a little more realistic and true to life on the iPhone's display 
but the drawback is the size. The iPhone's display is only 4 inches diagonally versus the 5 inches on the Xperia Z. So you're getting an extra inch of display and thanks to the Sony Mobile Bravia Engine 2 on the Xperia Z, the colors pop a lot more in video playback and in pictures. Once again, it comes down to accuracy versus clarity and super saturation. And in this case, it comes down to size as well. So as far as hardware goes, both the iPhone 5 and the Xperia Z are top in their class. They're both exceptionally well built and sturdy, but how do they fare in software? Let's take a look. While it promises few to no hiccups in daily performance, iOS is the iPhone 5's Achilles heel. Apple really hasn't updated the interface in many years and it looks almost the same as it did when the original iPhone launched. Only minor things such as folders and wallpapers have been added to the mix. The experience on the Xperia Z is very much like the stock Android experience. The icons and the widgets are a little different, they're customized to Sony's liking, but the experience overall is very stock-like, meaning these two devices have very few similarities in terms of software. iOS is aging poorly, and Google is constantly innovating and adding new features to Android. The Xperia Z comes with Android 4.1.2, so it's not on the latest version of Android, unfortunately, but it does have all the features that were included in the first Jelly Bean update. Everything from how you switch applications to how you navigate the operating system is totally different. The iPhone 5's home screen is very rudimentary. It consists of only folders and icons, and the only customization outside of jailbreaking your device is rearranging the order of icons and folders or changing the wallpaper. The Xperia Z's interface, however, has widgets, icons, folders, and shortcuts, all of which can be rearranged in any order and placed wherever you like. Sony's custom software also comes with the ability to apply different themes, which changes the accent color system wide. It basically allows you to customize the interface to your liking. This is one area where the Xperia Z has a true advantage over the iPhone. For years now, Apple's iPhones have been regarded as having some of the most popular and impressive smartphone cameras. Only a few contenders have come about in the past few years, such as some entries from Nokia and maybe the Galaxy S3. The Xperia Z, however, matches the iPhone 5 almost exactly in image sensing. The iPhone 5 might have a little edge in terms of detail and clarity, but as far as saturation, color reproduction, contrast, and brightness go, they're really on par with one another. Where the Xperia Z truly has the advantage is in software. The level of customization and number of features in the Xperia Z's camera application is impressive, while Apple's stock camera application really only gives you the options for a grid, HDR, panorama, and flash on or off. But when you're outside in conditions where the lighting is perfect, or whether you're inside where lighting is less favorable, both of these cameras operate on a very similar level. The 13.1 megapixel sensor in the Xperia Z doesn't necessarily mean it has a better camera. For most of the shots, I stepped it down to 9 megapixels for the 16-9 aspect ratio, and some of the shots were shot at either 12 or 13 megapixels, and other than the actual output size of these photos, the difference is negligible. All in all, the Xperia Z and the iPhone 5 are truly premium devices from Sony and Apple. The iPhone 5 has an advantage in display quality, but the size is a little small for some. On the other hand, the Xperia Z's display is larger and more dense, but its contrast is low and the colors are super saturated. The software on the iPhone 5 is getting a little long in the tooth, whereas the Xperia Z runs one of the most recent Android versions. And their camera performance is nearly neck and neck, so it really comes down to preference in size and operating system. So that's all we have for you in this comparison. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you liked it or found it helpful and subscribe to the channel. And stick around because there's more Xperia Z coverage and a full review next week. You can also find us on your favorite social networks, Google Plus and Facebook at PocketNow or Twitter at PocketNowTweets. I'm Taylor Martin and I will see you next time.